what's up? It's Zach Mackin here again today for Downsize Racing, and today I got a cool little video for you all. As you all know, this is my current setup in the garage, and to me at least, this is the perfect two-car garage for under $1,000 a month combined for both of them. For someone who's got decent credit and, you know, a decent job, if you are interested in cars at all, but also maybe don't want to drive your quote-unquote race car around every day, this truck right here is an amazing value, and I'm going to talk about, you know, payments, insurance, all types of stuff like this, and, I mean, guys, honestly, this is a 2018 F-150 Super Crew STX package with uh, four-wheel drive, and this is my 2017 Mustang, so here we go. So, guys, if you didn't know, I've had this car for about 11 months now, almost to the day I got it, January 20th, and, um, uh... I've done just about everything there is to do as far as in the NA world. It's got a Porter 2018 intake manifold, Texas Speed long tube headers, one and seven eighths inch primaries to uh, three inch collectors. Their Catless mid pipes into a Catless X pipe SR performance. It's two and a half inch exhaust. So I know it could go up to three, possibly in the future into Roush axle backs. It's got SVE S350 wheels with Firestone Firehawk Indy 500 285 35 19s in the front, and a Turo AZ850s uh, 285 uh, 45 19s in the rear. It's got Op7. And arrow LED turn signals, it's got a grill delete, it's got a black roof wrap, it's got a Roush coder intake, uh, it's got IMRC lockouts, it's got a Palm Beach Dino E85 tune, it's got this um, tri trim fill on the inside, and uh, let's see, it's got Roush winglets on the side here, it's got a GT350 track pack spoiler, it's got black badges, it's got a Dynamics LED reverse light, uh, rear diffuser fins down there, uh, it's got Dynamics LED side marker lights, it's got a Dynamics uh, tail light sequencer, uh, and let's see, on the inside it's got Dynamics interior uh, uh, dome lights, I guess is what you'd call them, I'm not sure. Uh, but other than that, uh, that's about it as far as the car goes. I mean, I say that's about it, you know, $5,000 in. But uh, here's the truck. It is completely stock, and here's why. So this is a 2018 F-150, and this is actually leased, believe it or not. And so the reason it is leased is because Ford offered a, uh, a deal. Uh, I'm not, I don't think they still offer it, but now nah, it's kind of crap. It's kind of not. I'll explain why. So they offered a deal. You bring uh, $3,000, and I think it, might, it was a little over $3,000 to them. And you get this brand new 2018 F-150 with a 2.7 liter EcoBoost engine, 10-speed automatic transmission, this STX package, which, by the way, if you didn't know, gives you this grill, this mesh grill in the front. Normally they have like a tri-bar, like dual-bar design, the big 20-inch wheels, and um, uh, obviously STX badge. And let's see, on the inside, you get a rubber floor, and you get the screen right there in the middle so and you get this big center console right here so there's that and the reason that I think that this is a perfect two-car garage is cost and what they are capable of doing and what they do for me so obviously you know the Mustang is the car I enjoy driving it's um, I mean I have a ton of fun in this car it's, it's pretty quick, you know, it's not dangerously fast by any means, but I mean, it's been 12 -0. obviously you could go 11s with just itty bitty bit more work, and um, I, it's, it sounds amazing, guys, I mean, you know, people obviously stare when you're, you know, riding through town or whatever, and you're going down the road, you know, you get a lot of thumbs up, which is, you know, greatly appreciated, and the truck over here, it's, this is a four-wheel drive truck, guys, alright, so it's got decently meaty hand cooked tires on I'm not going to say you know they're mud trains by any any stretch of the imagination but they get the job done so it's four wheel drive so it's basically go anywhere that you you know in within reason you know it's going to handle snow well this is the quietest vehicle I've ever ridden in bar none uh, let's see let me see if I can find the, the sticker for the tractor real quick alright guys so here you go 2018 F-150 Super Crew 4x4, 145 inch wheelbase, 2.7 Eco, 10 speed auto, tow mode, it's got different modes, sport cloth interior, shadow black, so right here's your options, STX package obviously is the equipment group 101A, um, it's got the XL sport appearance package which I guess is kind of part of the all that together, and so here you can see that was the sticker price was before discounts is forty five thousand one hundred and seventy after discounts is forty three thousand dollars one hundred and seventy so this is the mileage that the truck is supposed to get and from personal experience this is about what it gets it averages just a little bit over 19 city driving and a little bit of highway driving and so not a bad deal at all and it's plenty powerful it's got 325 horsepower and 400 pound feet of torque paired up with this 10 speed automatic and considering the truck only weighs about 48 4900 pounds 
yeah, you get the picture. It's a really fast truck. All right, so let's go ahead and step in the back, and this is the best thing about this truck, at least in my opinion. Let's move that right there. And keep in mind, I am six foot five and a half, almost six six. This is exactly how I would sit on a road trip, and I've got at least six inches of space in between this for a, another tall person that can ride in the front. Now, this is my exact driving position, so we go over here. Again, I'm 6'5", although I do like to personally sit a little closer than some people because that's just how I like to lay my arms. I kind of like to have them bent like this. And so, I mean, you can even see over here, I mean, I have 8-inch long hands, so got about 10 inches, two right there. I mean, it's got two USBs and an outlet in the rear, rear air, obviously heat. And, I mean, the seats are really comfortable, actually. They were, the, the material reminds me a lot of the seats in my car. It's just, it's more of a flat, I guess, you know, less of a bucket. And so, yeah cup holders back here, cup holders in the doors, little storage pockets, I don't know how you can see over there, but over there obviously you can see cup holder, little storage bins and everything like that, and so it's this is the perfect, you know, vehicle for anybody with a family or who just, you know, likes to ride their friends around because obviously in the Mustang, we try not to put people in the back because if you're anything really over like five, six, you're going to have a bad time. Plus, obviously, a little bit loud. So, the only negative that I have to say about this truck, and it's sort of our own fault, uh, well, either two, I guess. The truck got, we had to pay to keep this truck on the lot for a day so we could go up there. We got it in Lexus, Kentucky. Same Glen Ford we got that car at, and it does not have a hitch receiver. It does have a place for bumper pull right here, but obviously, you can't tow a whole lot with that, nor do you really want to because you don't want your trailer hanging off right there. So, I think it's like $400 to get. Uh, I think I don't know what class hitch receiver it is, but it's be a two-inch hitch receiver, you know, that goes back there. And the truck desperately needs some step bars. I'm gonna get those for Christmas here at some point or another. And so, just any really, just any kind at all, just because unlike me, not everyone is super tall, and some people struggle to get up in the truck just a little bit, especially like my grandmother and stuff, my mom. And obviously, you want to make their life a little bit easier because, again, family vehicle, race car. All right, guys. So I got the hoods popped on both, obviously. 5 liter Coyote V8 over here, ported 18 manifold on top of the lockout, so stock doesn't look exactly like that, and obviously Roush cold air intake. Over here, got the Generation 2 2.7 liter EcoBoost with direct and port injection. Wanting to possibly put a cold air intake on here just to maybe just give it a little bit different look, but other than that, it's, I mean, or not other than anything, it's totally 100% stock, and we'll get into why it is and probably why it will stay that way here in just a second. Why is this truck stock? A, it's leased, and you can do stuff to lease vehicles, you just have to return them to the way they came, and you have to be careful about if you had to have warranty work done while the car was unwarranty, you have to be careful about that. So let's talk about why you aren't supposed to do stuff to a lease vehicle. And you're not supposed to do anything to a lease vehicle because you technically do not own the vehicle outright. Uh, leasing is almost kind of like a long-term rent uh, in the fact that you you pay tax on the car, you know, you make the payment on the car, truck, whatever, but at the end of the day, you're allowed a certain number of uh, miles per year, and if you cross over that mile, depending on the car's value, you have to pay so many cents per mile, or even in you know, super high-end cars, probably dollars per mile, uh, and if you can stay under that, literally, the, this right here, this is a 24-month lease. And so tw after 24 months of owning the car, or actually, I think it, it'll work out to be like 27 months because I don't think you, through Ford, you don't have anything to do for like the first 90 days. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure that's how it went. I feel like we got the truck in March and didn't have to make a payment till summer. So, you know, that something like that. And so either way, you know, a little over two years, and we'll get into the pricing now, but... Uh, Again, pricing was it's you brought forward three thousand dollars or three thousand and change, and it's supposed to be one ninety nine a month. Well, that's you know obviously you can't read the fine print, and that's before that a lot of Ford's leases used to have everything I think included like it, taxes and all that, um, but this did not. And it was kind it kind of was a shaft, but not really because again super cheap for what it is. Again, you know forty four thousand dollar truck or more. Retail value, obviously, you know, probably could get it for mid-30s, but either way, still ex an expensive piece of machinery to be having for a couple hundred dollars a month with just a few thousand dollars down. And so uh, the final price, I think, after some, uh, you know, finagling is a term I like to use, of the salesman, uh, it was super low, came in just over $230. So it's $230 a month, and for full coverage, it's... I probably need to look at it, but uh, off the top of my head, I want to say that it's about a hundred and fifty dollars a month. 
something right around that. So you think, even if it was just a little bit more, you're still paying about $400 a month for this truck, not counting, you know, the fuel, obviously, that you have to pay for and get. And the good thing about this is you don't have to run premium. A lot of EcoBoost, you know, it's, it's recommended through, you know, obviously a turbocharged direct injection engine, but you don't have to. And uh, I think the engine is actually rated on 87. So even if you run premium, should get just a little bit more power. And not a crazy amount, but... Uh, I know in my old EcoBoost Mustang, Ford claimed a 10% reduction in power if you went from 93 to 87. So it's a pretty big deal. The truck is obviously stout. I have tested personally with just a timer, not really accounting for any you know one foot rollout or being exactly 100% scientific about the speed uh, in the low five second range, and that seems to be about or low to mid five second range, and that seems to be about on par with what magazines get. So you know I, I'm pretty confident in those numbers. Obviously, it's super quick. Uh, I think with uh, actual hitch receiver, you can tow up to 8,000 pounds which is really incredible. So now on the flip side, why am I comfortable with modifying this car in many, many multiple different ways? And that is because of the security of this truck. Having a stock vehicle that will you, for the entire time that we have this truck, we will be under warranty. Uh, you know, it's at this particular dealership that we bought it for, Glenn Ford, oil changes are free for life uh, so long as you own the vehicle. And I mean, really, what do you have to pay for it? Rotate the tires and, and gas? the payment and so again you know somewhere around four hundred dollar threshold a month for that truck for insurance and monthly payment for the lease onto the car so like I said before I have calculated it up before and it is somewhere in the ballpark of five thousand fifty two hundred dollars that I have in the car uh, not counting uh, or I'm sorry it was a little bit under five thousand not counting this this was on the car when I got it this and the exhaust axle back exhaust mufflers so, you know, this is a retail value of about $300. The exhaust is about $500. And so, you know, $800, $800, sorry, I can't speak, but, um, uh, you know, $5,500 or so in the car, you know, with everything on it, everything done to it, uh, you know, a couple things have been changed. and But other than that, you know, I, I, the only thing I really have left to do, I think I talked about it in the previous video, was hood vents need to be black. I want to get a new intake. Something you might not know, you can run the 2018 JLT intake with a 120 millimeter math sensor with the 2018 manifold swap car. So that's what I'm looking into doing. And again, I want to paint my brake calipers blue. Other than that, the car will be done for a while, get it obviously retuned, but other than that, and so this is why I'm comfortable doing this car. Not to say that modifying your car is dangerous, because trust me, it's not, as long as you do it right. I'm comfortable with, if something does, you know, start, you know, possibly messing up, as long as it's minor, I have that. And obviously, you know, I have other vehicles, very blessed to, you know, live in a good family, you know, would not let me go without transportation, but, you know, it's much easier in the back of your mind knowing that, hey, uh, you know, headers are a pretty big job. Are you worried about it? Nah, not really, because if, you know, something were, were to go wrong, I would pay to have it fixed and be able to drive that around while it was doing so. So, this is my personal race car. Is it super fast? No. Is it race car theoretically fast? No. But... That's what I like to call it, and it's kind of a gimmick. It's sort of funny, and I love it. I love the car. Uh, the only complaint I think I've had about the car so far was when I first got it, uh, the hood seemed to be misaligned, and I don't know if it'll pick it up on the GoPro, but I had to have it fixed, and you can barely see where they blended it in right there. This hood was too far back, and it rubbed right here. If you're a long-time subscriber, you will remember, but other than that, Again, this truck is totally stock. There's literally nothing done to it other than there are some cheap floor mats thrown in there just to save you the trouble of having to clean the floor every single time that you wash the interior. So now, how much do I pay for this car? Uh, well, my old EcoBoost Mustang was leased and uh, traded this in. And so it had a little tiny bit of negative equity on that car. It was the dealership uh, gave me sixteen five for it. And it was payoff was like seventeen two, so I had about seven hundred dollars negative equity in this car, and uh, or in the EcoBoost Mustang. Sorry, excuse me. And they had this car listed for like twenty six thousand, like five hundred and change. Ended up getting the car for a little bit over twenty six thousand. Talked them down another couple hundred dollars, you know, because always back in money in dealerships and stuff. And I, you know, don't blame them for trying to make money. That's you know obviously what they need to do. But you know, again, got this for a little bit over twenty six thousand. Ended up being right around uh, thirty thousand five hundred dollars tagged, uh, taxed and titled. You know, obviously on the road. And so pay around four hundred and seventy dollars a month. It's a little under, but you know, it's obviously rounded up a little bit so $470 a month for the car it's on a 72 month finance yep so 
six years and so obviously that's a long time but in the future we'll have a job and i will pay more on it than I, or a full-time job so to speak i will pay more on it uh, you know hopefully maybe youtube will take off so keep supporting us guys merch down below but uh insurance for this is a little higher i think than the truck not a crazy amount this car only went up to go from the ecoboost which is a four-cylinder to this big v8 it only went up like it's like thirty dollars every six months or something so another sixty dollars a year that's five dollars a month that's not crazy and so uh and it's in the ballpark of 175 uh it's not exactly that but it's in the ballpark of that and again i'm quoting around about numbers so it's not you know to share 100 percent personal information so you know you take what 470 plus about you know say another 100 and if, you, if it was 180 you'd be in uh 650 a month and so this setup right here round about a thousand dollars paid for each month insured on the road and obviously you know every so often do have to tag them and get the little sticker on the back but other than that guys i mean this is a perfect two-car garage you can take anybody anywhere in that vehicle i can go have just about as much fun as you can with your clothes on <laughs> i'm just kidding in this car and um uh, I love it. I love them both. And listen, I am a Ford guy. Don't get me wrong. I know I'm going to get hated on. Oh, Chevy makes a better truck. Camaro's better. Corvette, blah, blah, blah. If you think that, I'm happy for you. I am a super big fan of Chevrolet General Motors. I love the Corvettes. I always have. Mustangs are a little bit more attainable for me currently. Again, 21 years old in college for now at least. And this truck, again, not crazy expensive. This, this basically gets paid for with uh, a little bit of the YouTube money. And this gets paid for with just working on the side just a little bit and pay for gas and stuff. So I'd say this car right here uses, without taking any trips, it takes right now, gas is cheap. It only takes about $40 and change to fill this up. Uh, 16 gallon tank this truck right here uh, normally runs on a7 although i will run premium through it every so often so i mean it's under two dollars right now 26 gallon tank so it's right about 50 dollars a little over 50 dollars to fill this one up uh, this one obviously gets a little bit better gas mileage a because it's supposed to technically i guess but b because you know kind of drive this one maybe through mexico once or twice a day and so it's just very nice living close to the Mexican border, let me tell you. And so obviously, you know, keep my foot out of this one a little bit more. Although I do like to have fun in that truck also because it, it handles very well to be, you know, very tall. Uh, you know, obviously it rolls a little bit, but it handles extremely just well, just like a car. And uh, no complaints. Obviously, this car has big, wide, sticky tires. Much better. But again, guys, this is my car that, you know, it's my dream car as far as affordable car. You know, growing up, this is what I always wanted. I've done everything I've ever wanted to this car with, you know, hard work. And this truck right here is something that I know is going to be reliable. It's warrantied if, you, if something does mess up. You don't have to worry about that for the entire time that I own it. And don't have to take the hit in depreciation if I was to have to sell it because it's leased. Simply just give it back to the dealership so long as the miles are under. And they pretty much go from there. Might even possibly consider buying this one out though. It's a very nice truck and will be a very nice truck for some time to come. You know, interior, I'm not a big like lover, I guess, of like... Uh, how am I trying to say this without being like crazy uh, interiors that are flamboyant I guess so to speak so I mean you can see you know this this truck needs tint obviously again too the car already has tint but this truck is cloth with a touch screen and that's it this car is cloth with not even a touch screen so I, I'm personally not a big fan I even like cloth seats more so they seem to be more comfortable for my body type and these seats again here are also super comfortable driving position in both cars is pretty good for a sports car the mustang could possibly be a little bit better could be a little bit lower down if that makes sense you kind of feel like you're sitting on top of the car but other than that guys comment down below and let me know what you have in your garage if you do have two vehicles if you just have one if you had to have one what would it be for me i'd have a mustang a sports car of some kind uh that would just be me I, I would move somewhere where that you know i could use that you know as my daily driver or find a way to uh, use public transportation if I couldn't dr daily drive it. I, I love trucks, don't get me wrong, but at, at the end of the day for me, uh, it, you know, it's it's about having fun. You only live once, you know. While I'm young, got to enjoy it, I guess. And so this is a great truck, don't get me wrong. I recommend it to anyone, and I love it. I'm so thankful to have it. But this car right here, it's my baby, as you all know. You've seen it probably more on the channel, even though the videos on this truck right here do very well. And so thank you for the continued support on those. Uh, this car right here is my baby. And so I will probably, if I can, keep this one forever. If I'm 100% if if honest or maybe not this one, but a car 
uh, what I'm trying to say is I'll keep a car like this for forever. It might not be this exact car, although I'd love to, but uh, they have made some advances in the last couple of years, you know, with better transmissions and stuff, which the transmission in this truck is amazing, the 10-speed auto. Six-speed auto in this isn't bad, but it's just a little outdated at this point, and so that's that's be the only thing probably different. I might get a Mustang or sports car with a better transmission. All right, guys, so there you have it. I know I rambled on a little bit right there, but perfect two-car garage in my opinion. Go anywhere vehicle, take anyone anywhere, have fun vehicle. And again, you know, for a reasonable price, if you make decent money at all, you know, I mean, making $500 a week is not super hard. I could personally do that if I just wanted to wash cars every day. I'd have to work for a little bit, you know, try to get customer base, but it's not super difficult and so just about anyone with a decent credit score you know so long as you're not super super in debt and uh, willing to work you can you can have this just like I have it and you know obviously uh, you want to do stuff to your car you gotta put in a little extra work you know find a, a passion like YouTube that's what helps me do stuff to that or you know vice versa if I want to you know pay for that you know it, it, money works either way so whatever it all adds up together in the end but guys I hope you enjoyed comment down below and let me know if you did and give this video a like because it's really helping us out and guys um, hopefully we will have hit 4,000 subs by the time this video airs and I just want to say from the bottom of my heart thank you guys so much uh, for the continued support I hope we continue to grow and in 2019 guys there's going to be crazy good content we got so many good plans obviously like I said in the last video you're going to have a better camera uh, going to be traveling more places as usual and I can't wait guys so I hope y'all are as excited as I am but until next time guys peace out have a Merry Christmas, and I wish you and your families the best. So that's from me here at DSR and everyone else. Merry Christmas, and I hope you have a great holiday break if you're on it or just holiday in general. Let me know what you think of this video, guys. So peace out.